confidence and commitment. We hear about it a lot. There are many researchers that show that top class athletes have really high levels of commitment and self-efficacy. They believe they can execute the skills and master the persistence that is needed to reach top performance. And most importantly, that they can cope with the adversities that might arise. I'll repeat it again. Having high levels of self-efficacy means that you believe that you can achieve your goal independently from internal and external conditions. It can be high humidity, having a stomach ache, but also having an injury and having to overcome it, or even having high levels of anxiety. It could be anything. There is much to say about self-efficacy probably too much for a single video, but we know that one element to it is made of physical and mental routines. It's normal to have routines. You may have one without realizing it. <gasps> it's not magical thinking. If I do this, then something else might happen. I will win. I can achieve my goal. No. But the thing I'm about that does the job is bibbidi bobbidi boo. A routine, it's a pattern of behaviors and thoughts that help to tune uh, into specific physical and mental states. Ideally, the zone of optimal functioning. If you don't know what that is? Check out my video on mental preparation. Maybe you don't have a specific routine because you hate them. And so you try to find a way to do things differently every time. I was like mix and match and explore variety. Why do you want it, Joe? Please know that this can be considered a purely mental routine. And this is because you're guiding your behavior to tune yourself in a specific and um, consistent mental state. It could be being mindful of what you do, have fun, or boost your creativity. The first important evidence that we see in the literature is that successful athletes are consistent with their routines. They will use the same routine independently from the importance of the competition. Less successful athletes, on the other hand, tend to psych up more and or to um, fail to consistently maintain the same routine with more important competitions and events. This is why coaches often advise to practice and maintain the same routine in training as well. This is actually really common in powerlifting and weightlifting. Independently from how heavy your squat or deadlift is, maintain your preferred setup every time. Second evidence, successful routines are flexible in the meaning that they're more adaptable to different situations. Let's pretend that my pre-competition routine or pre-project routine lasts around 25 to 30 minutes. It happens that my available time is not completely dependent on me. For example, for traffic, I might arrive later than expected, or for bad weather, my turn could be delayed. In this case, it's important to have what in the literature is referred to as stretch and shrink routines. The shrink routine must take the core elements of the routine and um, condensate them in 5-10 minutes. The stretch routine is used when you have to maintain the high level of activation for a long period of time. It happens when you have delays of around one hour. In this case, you have to adapt your routine so that you maintain the level of focus throughout the time, putting the core elements towards the end of it again. And this leads to the final key point, intentionality. Being able to identify the core elements of your routine is nothing but trivial. This implies that first you're able to pinpoint what are your necessities, your uh, levels of optimal activation for physically and mentally. Then you need to know how to reach your goal in an intentional way. Finally, you ideally need to get rid of everything that is pulling you back. The best way to do this is to explore, but specifically to test the available strategies that you have. Make a journal in which you take note of all the little experiments that you do. See how different strategies make you feel. Try adding or removing new elements and see if you notice some kind of differences. Take your time to develop them and make sure to try to apply them in simulations. 
So do as many simulations as, as you can and try to uh, make the level of mental activation similar to one of a competition or one important event. And finally, being mindful that your needs might change throughout the years or even depending on the situation. Obviously, we know it's difficult to pinpoint what a good routine and a bad routine is because now we know that a good routine is something that works for you and for no one else. Some elements are trivially obvious. A pre-competition routine that lasts one and a half hour, like one that does Yudai Ikeda for, uh, before training, it's not optimal if it's not flexible. Obviously, I cannot say this for him because I have no, not enough knowledge about his training routine and his competition routine. But if you're in this situation, my best guess is that you probably didn't give yourself the chance to test your routine. And the fear of not being ready is pulling you along with more and more elements. Apart from these practical elements, we cannot say what is the best routine for you but we can see what is the best way to find your routine. If you didn't think beforehand about these elements, the three core pain points that I showed, try to apply them and tell me what happened. I mean, what happened? Was your intuition good enough? Great, now you have more intentionality and awareness of your routine and why it works for you. And maybe you can learn to apply them in a better way in uh, depending on the situation. This also makes them more meaningful and powerful. What is your routine? Do you have one and why do you like it? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next video and stay psyched.